All right. Okay, I'm still trying to figure this whole shebang out, but we've got lots of critters here. Is there anybody out there? I'm trying to see if we are live or not. Let y'all look at my chickens for a second. All right. Hey, I'm getting a couple of people here. Hi, guys. Let me see here. So I've not really had a lot of experience doing live, so you have to work with me. Hey, there I am. Hi, everybody. It's Mama Bear out in the barn. Yay. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I think my help might be on its way. Hi, guys. Um, so if I do get some help, maybe um, I can hold some. Here we go. i got a light here in the background, too. Um, just for your sake here it's not stabilizing so if you could hold the camera my son is here to help me out okay I'm gonna show you guys some really cool stuff okay all right first I'm gonna start with some cool stuff that we have talked about in our science classes here um, at the farm and here in the farm we've got tons of animals tons of critters tons of stuff to kind of uh, help us understand science a little better you can hear my cow in the background. He's already ready to go. He's mooing up a storm because he knows it's supper time. And as you know, in Ohio, it's dark this time of year. So we have to do the best we can with the lighting. I've got these giant floodlights, so I'm kind of blinded right now. But my critters are all happy to be here. Um, we're going to keep it landscape like, like that. Okay. And my son's going to try to help me with some of the um, technical end of things. I think he might be able to... Um, to like see your chat and, and maybe help me answer some questions if you have it. So we might be flipping around just a minute here to get things started. So I'm going to run in and get a chicken out of my chicken pen. It's going to follow me a little bit. Go ahead and flip that if you want so that you can see how, how it's going here. All right, guys. Hi, chicky chickies. Alright, so we got a chicken here. So this, this whole thing has really been fun to just show everybody um, just an example of what things are like on the farm and animals. Everybody loves animals. They're so much fun. And one of the best things that you can do to learn about science is to be a part of uh, be a part of the farm. Now this is one that's already got her wings clipped, so I'm going to have to get another one to show you. Because I want to show you the wings of a bird. Um, specifically a chicken, of course, but let me check, let me get another one here. Sorry, Missy, you are not wings clips. I can't show them. <laughs> They're nice and noisy. Okay, so what I wanted to show you about this here chicken, um, chickens are amazing. They fit in both the game category and the perching birds, and we know they're perching birds because look at their claws. They've got these perfect claws that are able to grasp onto things, and so they can grab around and hold onto things. But they're not like perching birds like, you know, a cardinal or a blue jay. Those are perching birds that sing. Well, this is a bird that's mostly for meat and for eggs. So we love, we love using these uh, chickens as part of our... Um, just part of our, our farm here because of the food that it provides, but they also bring a lot of joy. And if you've ever had chickens, you know what I'm talking about. They're so much fun to watch. But but chickens even have the ability to fly. And it's kind of hilarious when you try to watch them fly because they don't go very far. If you've ever seen a chicken fly, you know that they're not like meant for flying. But they do have flight feathers. I wanted to show you them. Let me pull his wing out. Now I noticed She's not very happy. Notice on her wing, she's got all these long feathers right up at the front. Those are called the primary wings. They're, they're primary feathers, primary flight feathers. Then they have this second batch right here. These are the secondary feathers. And you can see they're almost separated out. They look a little bit different than these ones up here. And then clear close to their elbow right up in here are the tertiary feathers. And and as a as a chicken, they tend to like to fly and perch up in trees, and they'll get into trouble actually. So, and by predators. So, what we do sometimes is to give them a little more freedom to roam. We clip their wings so they can't fly. And so, what we'll do, which is that, 
the first chicken I saw, I showed you, already had her wings or her feathers flip, uh, clipped. So what we do is clip them right along the edge here. These are contour feathers, and we clip them right here so that they can't fly. <laughs> and she, she would be flying if I'd let her. <laughs> and this little hen is called, she's an Easter egg or an Americana, and she lays green eggs. And so she's actually pretty young yet. She is, um, she hatched, I think, in about June or July. Now notice, do you hear the rest of these guys? They, this is their language. This is the way they tell each other, we're in danger, something's not right, one of us is having trouble, and they send the message to each other. It's kind of like their own little language. So I wanted to tell you about that. The other thing about birds is not just chickens, of course, but there are, are birds that fly, and the way they fly, I've got a chorus behind me, the way they fly is an airfoil. Their, their wings are shaped like a perfect airfoil. So the air goes really quickly over top and it goes real steady and firm underneath. And so underneath it causes a lift. And that's how they fly. They're a noisy bunch. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check and see if I have any eggs. There you go, sweetie, all's well. There we go, I got an egg. <laughs> so the next animal I want to bring you to is over here. We're going to go to the little rabbit hutch. He's probably going to run away, or she. Come here, sweetie. Hey there. All right, yeah, we'll see what she does here. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see if she lets me get her. This is my daughter's bunny. This is Stella. This is my daughter's bunny. And so she likes my daughter much more than me. Don't you, Stella? Yeah, so sweetie. So Stella is just a normal bunny rabbit, and bunnies have um, this amazing ability to reproduce. <laughs> Rabbits can make babies in one month from beginning to end. They, their gestation period is 28 days. And they can have a whole bunch of babies at one time, so that's a lot of reproduction that goes on. Also, bunnies, I don't know if you can see her teeth. She might not cooperate, but bunnies have these teeth in the front. Um, yeah, she's not going to show you, but you can see her face. She's really cute. Um, her teeth will grow her entire life. Their teeth will just keep growing, kind of like fingernails grow for us. Their teeth grow and grow and grow, and so they have to have hard things to nibble on, like a piece of wood or sometimes even hay is strong enough that they can nibble down, kind of file down their teeth a little bit. Another really cool thing about bunnies is their ears. Now you notice her ears are back and flat right now because she's alert and aware of what's going on. She's like, wait a minute, what's going on? Bright lights, cameras, I don't know about this. But her ears have the ability to do a 180 degree turn. So they can be forward facing to here in front of them, and then they can turn all the way around to the back of their head to hear what's behind them. And that's because they are very much um, sought after by predators. Predators want to eat them for dinner. So they have to be very alert and aware of their surroundings, and they really count on their ears. So rabbit ears is true. A lot of people talk about having rabbit ears, and that's good hearing, and that's very true because bunnies have very good hearing. All right, say bye, Stella. Say bye. And her eyes are really alert and aware. <laughs> All right. There you go, sweetie. Okay, so the next one we're going to go to, let's see, look at your comments here. How are you guys doing? Hey, if any, hi, Joy. If anybody's got any uh, questions, go ahead and ask, and we'll get those to you. All right, I have to show you my little goaty guys. Come here, buddy. This is, let's go over here where I'm not against the light. Um, <laughs> hi, buddy. Uh, these, are, these are fun. We've got LaToya and Janet Jackson. These are, of course, named after the dynamic sisters. Um, and, and they do sing a little bit. <laughs> if you hear them, sometimes they'll sing. She might sing for you. Um, these guys are ungulates, and ungulates have special kind of hooves where they are either um, an even toed or an odd toed. And this one is an even toed, which means it has a split hoof. I don't know if you can see how this hoof has a split right down the middle. Hi, Latoya. Hi. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> and the split hoofed animals, they're kind of dirty, aren't you? What's the matter, huh? What's the matter? They, um, they are also ruminant animals, which means they have four stomachs and they, um, they chew their cud. So they'll swallow their food and then they'll kind of bring it back up in their mouth and chew on it for a while. It's like their little homemade chewing gum. And, um, and they also, <laughs> she might sing after all. They also have um, no teeth on the top. I don't know if we can open her mouth and let her see. Let's see if we can look inside. Let's come here, Latoya. Let's look inside your mouth. She's just going to suck on my thumb. Okay, you can almost see they have no teeth on the top, <laughs> but they do have teeth on the bottom. And the teeth on the bottom, you're not going to show us, are you? She's like, no. <laughs> the teeth on the bottom are there so that they can cut through the grass and they can slice the grass in order for them to be able to eat and munch. But the top of it, the top of their mouth is like a real firm palate so that they are able to slice on it without hurting themselves. Yes. Hi there, buddy. Now, her eyes are super dark, but if you've ever seen a, a goat's eyes before, I don't know if you can tell in the light a little bit, they have a rectangular shaped pupil. Oh no, can you notice that? Can you see real good? And goats have a rectangular shaped pu pupil because they are able to see about 330 or so degrees of their periphery, which means they can see almost in the back of their head. So that's why goats are so fantastic about getting out of their pens and seeing what's going on and being aware. It feels like they already know what's going on before anybody else does. It's because they can almost see in the back of their head. Hey, you. <laughs> now this little guy is about, um, I'm trying to think, we're working on almost eight weeks old. So this is the time when they're about weaning from their mama and they don't need to have milk anymore. We've been feeding them milk bottles, but these guys are, are now able to eat their own feed. All right, Latoya, I'm all done. She's going to shake it off. Okay, we're going to switch into another area and I'm going to show you my cow. And our cow's name is Fergus, and it's a little bit dark, and he's a black Angus and uh, Holstein mix. So he's all black, and he's hard to see, but we're going to try. So hang with me. Watch those lights that kind of glare. And watch your step here, David. Okay, it is dark. Three. Fergie. Come here, buddy. One second, I've got a goat. Oh. I've got to get back in go. here. All oh, right. Go back in. The goat got loose. You got it? <laughs> All right. Come here, Fergus. I don't know. Can you see him okay? Yep. All right. This is Fergus. He's our beef cow. He's a steer. And one of the things I wanted to tell you about Fergus is that he's raised for meat. And so when he was a baby, he was considered a bull. That's what a boy, a boy cow is. Um, a boy cow is a bull. But when they, um, when they are castrated, they actually don't have as much hormones going on in their, in their body so that they can actually be, um, their, their muscles are a lot uh, more tender for meat. Um, but we also, on our dairy farm, we raise um, Holstein cows that produce milk. And they, a really good producing cow, can, a, a milk producing cow can make up to 20 gallons of milk a day, which is a lot of milk, 20 gallons of milk. And look at here, Fergie loves to, he loves licking too. He's a, he's a very friendly cow. We like to treat our guys right around here so that they are friendly and happy. Hey, Fergus. They love getting their heads rubbed too. They're real friendly. Also, uh, another thing about cows is they are also a split hoof, um, a split hoof ungulate, which means that they have an even toe, just like the goats. And they also are ruminant uh, animals, where they have four stomachs and they chew their cud, and um, that's how they digest. Um, another interesting thing about cows is they also have the ability to see almost clear to the back of their head. The only thing with cows, if you notice him, <laughs> hi buddy, if you notice his eyes are almost on the sides of his head. And that makes it so that he has a good vision on each side. He can see from the front all the way to the back, from the front all the way to the back on each side. But he doesn't, he's not able to see um, together with his eyes together very well. Only if you're standing directly in front of him. 
So we always, we kind of have this ability to see things, um, you know, with both eyes. And it's kind of nice to be able to see that way, but he only can see for a little tiny narrow view with uh, both eyes. Hi, Fergus. Hi, buddy. He's a sweetheart. Okay, so while we're walking, I will um, take you to the next spot. Why don't you flip it around here? All right. I think I'm covering up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Adjusting in the barn. Hi, guys. Peter and Timothy's here. Hey. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm going to try to see where I'm going here at the same time while I'm walking. We're walking to the horse barn. Um, where all the horses are. We have 16 horses on the farm. And um, my son David is the cameraman and he's been a wonderful help to me. And hopefully I won't trip while we're walking. <laughs> but and you can hear my, my cow in the background. He's like, feed me already. What's going on here? All right, so we're headed to the horse barn and I'm gonna kind of show you what it looks like in the barn with all the horses. There might even be someone taking a lesson there's always something going on in the barn. It's a very busy and fun place. But I want to show you a couple really cool things about the horses. So here we are. I'm gonna let David take over for the camera again. I'm trying to reconnect. If I lose connection, I may lose connection because my Wi-Fi is not as good right here. Hopefully it'll be okay. You guys still with me? Make sure I got folks with me here. Go ahead and hook me back up if you don't mind. Or you, you got it. You can flip it too. All right. Okay, so we're gonna come down this way. I'm gonna see if I can bring. Is anybody on a horse? <laughs> yeah, Lily. Yeah. Awesome. We're gonna show you guys some horses down here. These are my friends. Say hi, Facebook world. Hi. <laughs> How's my connection, David? Still good? Good. Hi. We're going to show everybody some horses here. These are my friends. They like to ride. Say everybody say hi to Lily. No. <laughs> this is Gala. She's a sweet girl. This is um, it's Facebook Live. This is Sydney. Oh, wait, we're Sydney's live? one of our lesson kids. We're live. She's live. <laughs> okay, come on over here. I'm going to show you my horse. <laughs> Gonna get my light for me. How's my connection, David? We're still on? You're good. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do with Blaze here, I'm gonna bring her out to the light where we can see a little better. Hi, sweetie. Hi. I wanted to tell you just a couple things about Blaze. Horses cannot breathe through their mouth, they only breathe through their nose. That's a really cool thing about horses. And if you think about race horses and the ones that are running, doing a lot of exercise, they're only breathing through their nose. And that's why you see. Horses' nostrils will flare real big when they're breathing hard. Well, Blaze here, she's a sweetie, when they go to meet each other, if horses go to meet another horse, they will to stick their noses to each other and breathe through their noses at each other just to kind of get an idea of, of who that person is and if they're safe, and they learn about them by breathing. So even when you're going to visit a new horse, if you ever go to see a horse, one of the things you can do that actually makes them more relaxed about you is to breathe in their nostril. You just go, and they're like, okay, I can feel you. I know who you are. All right, so Blaze, we're going to bring her out. And we're going to take a look at her hoof, too. We're going to see what she looks like. show you some things on her now that we're in the lighter area. Um, one of the things about horses that's very similar to cows is their eyes. Notice where their eyes are located. 
So their periphery is much stronger than their ability to see straight ahead. Let's see if I can get this on here for you. And we're going to look at her hoof underneath. So I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not, but horses actually have something called a frog. And it's in their hoof. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Might need that little light again, too. So we're going to look at her hoof. Hey, Blaze. Hi, sweetie. Just kind of brush her down and get her real kind of calm. She's like, what's going on? It's my supper time. All right. Let's see if we can lift her hoof. Hey, sweetie. I could have picked one of my more cooperative horses. There we go. Maybe. All right, let's see here, lift, maybe, <laughs> she's not going to cooperate now that we're on you camera, want you want to help me out, yeah, yeah just <laughs> hang on to her for a minute, you got her, yeah, okay, here David, there you go, right back here, if you notice this V shape right here in the hoof, that's called the frog, and it's a real, uh, like a real soft area. The outside is really hard, and they actually get that part trimmed. But this part is called the frog because it's a shock absorber, because horses have a lot of weight. A lot of these guys are half a ton, so they have to be able to handle a lot of the weight and pressure. And if you look at their proportions, look at how skinny the leg is for how big the body is. It's just a lot of weight up here. So the frog is what kind of is a shock absorber for that. Also, um, the frog also is like a good blood supplier for those legs because they got to keep a lot of legs or a lot of blood going through these legs for the muscles in order for them to be able to handle all that. Another really cool thing about horses is in the wintertime they get real fuzzy. Now, I don't know if you can see how deep her fur is, but she's like a big, fuzzy, cuddly blanket right now. And she probably wouldn't mind being snuggled. <laughs> so let's go here to the front of her. Let's see her. And we're going to wrap our little deal up here, but I want I want to know if anybody has any questions or if there's something you want to see or something I didn't quite show you that we could um, we could talk about anything like that. Any questions? If you want to flip it, David, I could I can read. Yeah, so far. All right. Here we go. <laughs> awesome. Follow your follow your chat. There's Blaze. This is my horsey Blaze. So does anybody have any questions about the, um, the science classes that we teach? I know that those who are coming tonight get a special code for a, um, a coupon for a pre-biology course um, starting this spring, and uh, which is fun. Whoop, ladies. <laughs> she's, she's checking you guys out. She's saying, hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> All right, well, I don't see any questions. If you have anything, it'd be awesome to let me know. Um, if you do want to email me, you can email me at A B A E R, it's A Bear, at myfunscience.com, and I can answer any questions you have. You know, anything about the classes that we teach. Um, do I have a favorite animal? That's a hard one. And obviously, I have this thing for animals because I keep collecting them. <laughs> So I, I'm actually getting pigs in a couple days, too, so I end up having this problem that I like them all. <laughs> okay, what do, you, um, what do you do to get them to go? Oh, like kiss or kick, yep. Sometimes we do a little click sound like that, but mostly we use our legs. You use your legs, you push on them, they have like these little buttons, we call them, and they're little pressure points that if you push on them, then they don't like that feeling, so then they'll move forward. And you reward them for going forward by letting go of the pressure. Um, her name is Blaze, not because she's fast, <laughs> but because that's what they named her before I got her. Um, and I'm not even sure how she got that name. I'm not, but she does have, she's gray, but she has these two little orangey marks on her back end. So I wonder if that's why. Um, let's see. What are the ages recommended? Okay, for the 
pre-biology class, it's mostly fourth through seventh grade is what our target is. Some kids will be in, in more the eighth grade range and that's totally fine, or even ninth grade. It depends on what the parents are looking for and what kind of uh, learning styles the, the children has. Um, but we keep it at a place where it's a little bit easier reading material, but it's a lot of projects and a lot of hands-on stuff for kids so that they can learn by doing. That's more my method and my style anyway. Um, let's see. Couldn't do a second Facebook account. Oh, a, a second coupon. Um, oh yeah, okay, so I know you've got two boys, so go ahead and send an email um, to sign up, and, um, and then I'm sure that they'll hook you up. Any other questions? Let's see here. I think that might be it. Anything else? Just asking, asking around. I could show you guys our ponies. They're right behind me. This is Marshmallow. Marshmallow is six years old. We've had her for six years, since she was four months old. And she was a little stinker, because ponies are stinkers. They have to live up to their reputation. And Katie's over there. You probably can't see her. She's over in the corner, because she knows that she can't get as much attention as this one. <laughs> they have their own little pecking order. That's another interesting fact about horses. All right, anything else? Any other questions? No, are we good? I'm gonna get nibbled on behind me. Did you see that? She's like trying to eat my coat. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everybody to, for coming in and seeing us. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging with me while I bumble around and try to <laughs> figure out how to do Facebook Live. Um, oh, about the dairy farm. Um, so we milk about 120 cows and they are Holsteins, but we just got a handful of Jersey cows. So we're trying out some Jerseys. Jerseys make a lot more butter fat. And so, um, so we are trying to mix those in the, in the middle of them. Um, and that is on our, our fa uh, farm family dairy farm. That's like a mile and a half from here. So we have a horse farm and a dairy farm that we're working on. So any other questions? <laughs> Blaze is like, it's my dinner time. <laughs> You can see it in her eyes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always happy to help anybody. All right. Have a good night.